Yes! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. Someone sent me a wicked email. He's actually quite wicked, he was calling me a knob. Um, which is fair enough, yeah, I agree. But, what he was saying was... Um, oh, what was he saying? Oh yes, I said, this is all to do with the Formula 1 thing. A lot of people were asking, when I was talking about engines that are more powerful, have to have... A ground state higher clearance. What the fucking hell does that mean? So basically it means when an engine is cold, it has to have larger clearances. Not tolerances, clearances. Clearances is literally gaps between stuff. And someone says to... Uh, in the comments, a lot of people said, Well that doesn't make any sense, Matt, because of Formula 1. Right, Formula 1. Um, yes, there is a thing that I've already done a video about, which is about two strokes, which is about cold seizing, right? Cold seizing can happen. And what cold seizing is, is that you've got a combustion chamber and a cylinder and a piston. And when everything goes boom like that and the temperature rises, skyrockets, that heat will be transferred to what's around it. You know, you put coffee in a mug and the mug gets hot, right? You pour coffee into a mug and pour it straight back out again, put your hand in, you go, ah, fucking hell, that's a bit warm. Even if it's empty, it's it's very, very quick. If you put coffee into an aluminium or a tin mug, an aluminium one, pour coffee in or hot water, pour it clean out again, put your hand in, you'll go, motherfucker. Right? And the thing is, your engine is made out of, a lot, most of it is made out of aluminium. Um, so basically what happens is, is that your piston, seeing as though it's most of the equation, well, it's not most, it's less than half, but you've got a pent roof combustion chamber like this, you've got little skinny little cylinder walls like this, and you might have a piston like this, right? That's just the top of it. You've got a piston like this. It is a large amount of the surface area. Let's just say for argument's sake, it's 40% of that surface area. It is aluminium. Um, most of the time, I know they're, they're looking at steel pistons and that's quite cool and stuff when they're getting really skinny and what have you. We'll go through that. These pistons are aluminium, so they're going to soak up a lot of this heat. Now, if you run an engine immediately, what can happen is it does happen with two strokes. Um, because they've got so many, it happens more with two strokes because they've got so many power strokes very, very quickly. You've got to remember as well as your cylinder walls and all the rest of it aren't going to expand as rapidly as your piston because they're cooled. Even if it's just water just sat in that water jacket, that water has to heat up first before it even opens your thermostat. Um, and that water absorbs a lot of that heat, so your cylinder stays quite cool. With your piston, chooching away and all the rest of it, and yeah, whatever, with nick phrases, I've been, I've been catching up with AV. But uh, it's a good word. Um, so we're going to stick with it. This piston chooching up and down and all the rest of it, uh, it's going to get hot. And if it gets hot too quickly, it expands and it basically nips the cylinder because the cylinder hasn't expanded quickly enough yet. Um, hence why it's very good to warm your engine, give it a bit of time before you go ragging the living shit out of it, so on and so on and so on. Um, now, in Formula 1, what they do is they close, and same with MotoGP and stuff, they close up these clearances. And the reason why they do that is because you can maintain a higher pressure in your cylinder, which means you can have better thermal efficiency, better mechanical efficiency, you can get more power out. So, what they do is, is that they have quite the, the clearances are quite tight and what they require is the cylinder to already be up to temperature and the piston already be up to temperature before they even fire the engine up because their combustion process is really good you know what I mean like I say these are state-of-the-art engines and all the rest of it so then pistons are going to heat up pretty quickly and your piston isn't really cool, oil jets may, but compared to your cylinder walls, your cylinder walls has one of the best coolants known to man, which is water, and it has shit loads of it. There's a large thermal mass of water. <coughs> so if they start up them engines, then bad boys will seize. There's other bearings and stuff. Now the, con the crankshaft bearings and stuff, they aren't so much of a problem, but there are other bearings in the engine, and these are tight, tight clearance bearings because when they get so hot they're going to expand so you could have 
just say you have a C4 bearing, so you have a bearing like this with its outer race and its inner race, right, and you have a clearance in there, you have a gap in there between the balls. Now this can be at 20 degrees. But anyway, and I was saying that, uh, and this is what this email, this guy goes, it's absolute bollocks. More powerful engines um, don't have larger clearances. And I laughed. And I laughed because I know they do. Um, now, it depends what engine it is, and it's weird because I had to, to prove this point, I had to find an engine um, that was comparable. Um, and the problem with that is, is I need an engine where the power increases, <coughs> the balls and strokes are similar, because ball and stroke can have a big effect on it. You've got a large ball, there's a lot of piston slap, they can't, can't tend to just tighten them up. So what I found was, and to no one's surprise, it's Kawasaki. <laughs> um, I found the numbers for um, the Z900. So the Z900, I'll put them in order of power. Uh, ZX6, R, ZX10R, uh, and this was from 2017. This was from 2016. I can't remember what the ZX10 was from, but I've got a weird feeling it's 2014, I think. And then we've got the H2R, right, because the reason why I picked this is because it's got the H2R in it and the reason why I picked it was because um, it's the extreme of power. So with these th these four we should see a difference. The reason why I cho chose these as well is because they're from Kawasaki, as in it's all the same manufacturer. The other reason why I chose them is because <coughs> they're all four cylinders so we're not doing anything funky like some V-twins do and what have you. So basically what I did is I looked in the manual and looked at the standard sizes, min and max, for the piston size and the cylinder. I'll put the table up so you can pause it if you really want to look at it. But basically for the Z900, the minimum is 73.374 uh, and the maximum is 73.384. So there's 10 microns in it. That's the piston size from new. Same with the cylinders, um, but there is... 12 12 microns difference that's just their tolerance basically that's their um oh, that's that that's, that's actually their um iqc uh no it's o oqc that's their oqc their outgoing quality control limits basically so from them you can work out the min and the max so the minimum clearance between piston and cylinder for the z900 is uh 0.02 or 0.022 so basically 20 between 20 and 22 microns so that's the difference between the min and the max between your piston so basically just say like for our um, piston to cylinder for this one it's 0 0.02 uh, 20 to 20, 22 microns right so the average is 0 0.021, obviously, between them two. If we look at the ZX6, um, oh, that's the other thing we need to put. We need to put the power in, don't we? Idiot. But you can see where I'm going with that. There's no point writing all that shite out. There's a table if you really want to look at it. And you can check up all this stuff. <coughs> but if we look at the power... Uh, where were the power figures? There we are. So this is from the manufacturer, you know what I mean, whatever. Uh, 129 and 171 and 300 ish around there it depends who you ask <laughs> but you can see there's a massive difference there and I also looked at piston end uh, piston uh, ring end gaps stuff like that and but anyway and also the exhaust valves and intake valves and all the rest of it and there's bigger clearances there but if we look at the averages from piston, so piston to cylinder, if we look at the averages, uh, 0 0.021, so 21 microns, 
zero point zero three eight five microns. Uh, obviously, these aren't microns; they're spitting out numbers that are nanometers because it's just what's been done. Three one five zero point zero five three five. So you can see there that these <coughs> are going up. The ZX6R uh, has a um, tighter, uh, no, wider clearances than the ZX10 just say. Now, this one, the Z900, the ZX10 and the H2R, they're all pretty much a 1000cc. This one's a bit of a weird one. The other thing is, as well as what's weird about it, is that it's making, um, it's 12.9 to one compression that might have a difference between why this has got larger gaps um, because your initial compression and stuff like that when you look at um, the ring gaps same kind of story the ring gaps are just getting bigger and bigger and well 15 for this 15 for this and 17.5 for that so this is all to do with thermal expansion if you look at the exhaust valves <coughs> we've got 22 24 uh, 17 which is a bit of a weird one like i said they'll all be slightly different and for the h2r it's point uh, 33 at uh, 330 microns so quite a big gap for your exhaust valves and topping out at 0.38 so 380 microns maximum before you have to have that's just the the standard stock <coughs> i'll put a graph up but you can basically see with these engines the zx6 is a bit of a weird one in this because it has a really high compression um you know, the ZX-10R has 12.7, there's not much between friends there, but the Z900 has 11.8, so it's quite a bit off. Um, but you can see that even then, you've got the Z900 and the ZX-6 with more horsepower than the Z900 from 600cc, and that's got quite big uh, piston ring gaps in there. This is probably more, this number is probably bigger... Um, and out of place because of the bore and stroke they're using because they've got a um, tiny pistons because it's uh, 600 so they can kind of get away with that so it's got even bigger clearances but you can see here if we just look at these three the Z900, the ZX10 and the H2R they're all like I say uh, far away from a uh, thousand cc as you can see as the power goes up and you know it's ten, it's 10 microns more for the ZX10 and then it jumps by 20 microns and a bit because it's the H2R and it's producing shit loads of power. But we've got 100, nearly 200 and 300. You can kind of see that relationship between them. Like I said, I picked these because they have the numbers. And I wanted to put the ZX6 in um, because it is a four-cylinder. Um, and even then that's got larger clearances. But that we'll actually look at that in detail of the difference between these and this in relation to bore and stroke, piston side loading, stuff like that. But you can see that as the power increases from the same manufacturer, as the power increases four cylinders, the bore and strokes are pretty much knackers within each other. Um, you can see that as um, the power goes up, the clearances, the exhaust valve clearances, everything, all these clearances need to be bigger because these things thermally expand downwards. Hope that makes sense. We'll probably do a bit more about this because it's interesting shit. And I'll see you in a bit. <coughs> I held it. I held it for as long as I could.